Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the new Arena of Shades Battle Box and asking, is it good for Warcry? I've covered the new Arena of Shades Battle Box a little bit already in some preview videos, and it's going to be available to pre order this coming Saturday. But I thought in this video we could break the box down, have a look at all the different units, and just see how good this is going to be for Warcry. We'll take a look at the fighter cards, the abilities, and we'll look at the prices and break that down too. This looks like it could be a great box for new fans of Nighthorn and also Daughters of Cain. And with the new models for the Scripter Mortis and the Craven Throne Guard for the Nighthorn. And then that one model, the High Gladiatrix for the Daughters of Cain. You're going to get some new models in here as well. And of course, all the tokens, books and war scrolls for Age of Sigmar 2. As well as those new models, I think there's a nice variety of other fighters in here, which is going to be great fun for Warcry. So let's get started breaking them all down, and I'm going to use the stats from the Bringers of Death and the Sentinels of Order Warcry supplement books for the two Grand Alliances. And just be aware that there has been some updates in the recent Tome of Champions for points, so if you want to play with the most up-to-date points, then just check that out. Before we get started, I'd like to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, the Little Shop DVDs and Games in Liscard, and this is my local friendly game store where I get all my paints and the big box sets of all the favourite games for Warhammer. They've got an awesome selection of all the different kits you'll want for Age of Sigmar 40,000, Kill Team, Warcry, they offer some really great discounts and deliver across the UK. So I'll put all the details in the description below and then you can just give them a call and order your favourite products for Warhammer. Right, let's get started with the Daughters of Cain. And again, I'm taking all the information for them from the Sentinels of Order supplement book. And so let's take a look at the abilities first. Now, all the members of the Warband are going to have the Daughters of Cain faction room mark. So they're going to get two abilities that they can use. I'll cover those now so we don't go through them for each of the fighters later on. So the first one is a double called Bathe in Blood. And with this, a fighter can use this ability only if they are within three inches of a visible enemy fighter with one or more damage points allocated to them. And until the end of this fighter's activation, you can add one to both the attacks and strength characteristics of attack actions made by this fighter. This is a little bit wordy in quite a few conditions. They've got to be within three inches of an enemy fighter that's visible, and the enemy fighter has to have one or more damage points allocated to them. And as long as they meet those conditions, then until the end of the activation, they can add one to their attack and strength characteristics. So if they're making two attacks during the activation, then that's great because you can add one to both the attack and strength characteristic of both those attack actions. The second ability is a triple called Slaughter's Strength. And until the end of this fighter's activation, add the value of the ability to the strength characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less. So this is pretty cool. Again, it's until the end of the activation. So if you're making two attacks, then that's really great because you could add potentially, if you get five or six for your um, ability value, you can add that to the strength. So that's going to make these guys have a great, or girls, have a great chance of hitting the opponent. So that's the two abilities. Now let's start looking at the fighters themselves. And here's the brand new model, the Gladiatrix. And with this one, there's no card available yet. I'm going to be making one this month for my Patreon members. So if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon. But I'm just looking at the choices that are available in the book. And I'm thinking you could perhaps choose the Blood Rack Medusa, who's got the range weapon of two. But with this long whip, I think we want to be getting a longer range. So maybe the Malusi Iron Scale. But I've got to say, I don't think any of these options are really that great for this model. But if I had to pick one, I would go for the Malusi Iron Scale just to get that nice seven inch range. But 270.5 points is really high for this kind of model. So I don't think you'll get in quite a lot for this. I mean, if you look at the stats, the first weapon range, three to seven inch range, you're going to make two attack strength, three, dealing three to six on a crit. And then you've got a second weapon option at two inches, which is five attacks. Now, that's not bad, making four strength dealing two to four damage. So that second weapon option is actually quite good. Um, but the first one, I think for the value, I would want a little bit more from that. 
I do like the seven inch movement. Toughness four is not bad. And the wound is uh, being able to take 32. That's pretty impressive as well. And we're going to get some ability. So let's have a look at the abilities and see if that makes a difference to this point value. I'm not going to go through the blood rack medusa here because I just don't think it fits. So let's just stick to the Melusi iron scale. And so here you're going to get a leader ability, which is a triple called Sacrifice to Cain. And a fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. So another condition that really emphasizes the idea of either causing damage or taking down an opponent. Now, until the end of the battle round, you can add one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by visible friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So this is quite similar to the, the double we saw earlier, but now it's a triple and you can apply it to your other visible friendly fighters as long as they're within six inches of this fighter. So that's a nice buff there to your surrounding fighters and definitely want to be going in as a little group to attack the enemy. The Melusi also gets a double, but this is a regular fighter ability, not a leader ability. And this is called Turn to Crystal. And here you can pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter and roll two dice. For each roll of a four to five, allocate a damage point to that fighter. For each roll of six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So I think this kind of works with the look of the model with this whip you can add a bit of extra damage with a range as long as they're visibly within six inches of the fighter so i think this definitely fits with this new gladiatrix model so again 270.5 points might be a bit high but it all seems to add up with the abilities they fit in with it and i like the stats too the next models to look at are the Doomfire Warlocks. You're gonna get five of these included in the box set and you can choose to make one of them the Master of Warlocks if you wanted another leader, maybe use them as a hero, that kind of thing. So you've got two options here. Master of Warlocks is gonna be 190 points, got a movement 10. Toughness is only three, but you can get 26 wounds here. Got the leader room mark and the beast room mark. So we're gonna get some restrictions with doorways and things like that because of the beast. And then the weapon option, you've got the ranged weapon, which is 3 to 12 inches, two attacks, strength 3, dealing 1 to 3 on a crit. And then if you get up close, you've got the sword, range 1, three attacks, strength 3, dealing 1 to 3 on a crit 2. Now for the Doomflyer uh, Warlock, this is a bit less, 140 points. All the stats are the same except for the wounds where they can only take 18 wounds and they don't have any extra room marks and no extra abilities for the regular Doomfire Warlord. So these aren't going to put out much damage. I think, you know, dealing two attacks and three attacks, strength three, only dealing one to three points of damage and then having a toughness three isn't that great. You can take a little bit of damage though themselves at 18 or 26, I guess because of the beast they're riding. Um, but really you're looking at using these for that range weapon and having that nice movement 10. So they're going to get around the board quite quickly and they can attack at range. So they're really going to be able to stay out of the fray and not absorb too much damage. So they're going to be quite good for stealing objectives too and really getting around quickly. So I think there's some good and bad points for them. Personally, I wouldn't take the 190 points uh, Master of Warlocks, but sticking with the Doomflyer Warlocks, I think these would be quite fun to have a couple of them in the Warband. Either option is going to get those two fighter abilities we saw earlier on, but the Master of Warlocks is going to get the leader ability, which is that triple sacrifice to Cain that we saw earlier on with the previous leader. So I think this one doesn't really suit this model though. I wouldn't be too happy to use this with them. Um, you know, you've got to have that range characteristic of three or less to use it. Uh, and I don't know, it just doesn't seem like something that really fits with these because you want to use them at range. So yeah, I don't think these are the best leader options. Next, we've got the Canary Heart Render at 175 points. But you've also got an option to build one as a Shrike, which is 245 points. Now, the Shrike is another leader option, which you could use or have them as a hero. You've got the Agile Room Mark, the Fly Room Mark, and the Leader Room Mark. They've got Movement 12, Toughness 4, and they can take 20 wounds. They've got a nice range of 8 inches with their Spear or Javelin, and they're going to be making 3 attacks, Strength 4, dealing two to four on a crit. So that's not bad for a range weapon, but again, high at 245 points. 
The regular heart render, they're going to be 175 points. Their movement and toughness is the same, but they can only take half the amount of damage at 10. They still got that agile room up though, so they will get an ability we haven't seen yet. And there's some changes to the weapon stats where it's still range 8, but making two attacks, strength 4, and only dealing 1 to 4 on a crit. So not a huge amount of damage output there. I do like that movement 12 though, and having the ability to move around quickly, to fly, and have that range 8. Again, these ones can do some damage, take the objectives, move from one to another quite quickly, and stay out of that um, like fighting up close with some maybe some of the tougher opponents. So there's definitely some good things going on here with the heart renders. If you bought this kit separately, you'd also be able to buy them as life takers. And I'm assuming that these extra components for the heads and things are going to be included in this set, but I'm not sure. So I'm not going to cover that in the video, but just be aware you might have the option to also take them as life takers. So that really opens it up a lot more. Let's go back to the heart renders and look at the abilities next. Now the leader, the Shrike, is going to get le a leader ability that we've already seen. But if you go for the heart render or the leader, they're all going to get this new ability that comes because of that Agile Rumar. And this is a quad called Death on the Wind. And this fighter makes a bonus move action. Then they can make a bonus attack action. But in addition, you can add one to the strength characteristic of that attack action if the fighter finish the move action six inches or more from their starting position. So we can get this universal ability that gives us the bonus move and then bonus attack action, but now we're getting that extra strength. As long as we move in um, six inches or more from the starting position, which they're going to be doing, they're going to be doing a lot of movement. So that's pretty cool. So potentially you could take your first activation, uh, your first action, sorry, of the activation, move in, then use the bonus to do another move and an attack, and then you could either attack again or maybe even make a disengage move and still get quite a good distance away from the enemy. So I think you've got some nice tactical options here with the heart renders. Next up, you've got the Sisters of Slaughter and you're going to get a box of 10 of these. And from this box, you can also build the Handmaiden. So the Handmaiden is going to be a leader, maybe not a great option for your main leader, but potentially an option for a hero within your warband. And that Handmaiden is 150 points. Nice movement 5, toughness 4, and can take 16 wounds, that's not bad. And then with the weapon, we've got a range of 2 with this whip, and then you've got 4 attacks, strength 3, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. So that's not too bad, that's alright for 150 points. I'd like to see another ability there though, but you do get the leader ability. But with the Sisters of Slaughter, these are 85 points. Now they've got the same movement and toughness, but they can only take 8 points of damage. Their weapon range is 2, they're making one less attack with 3 attacks, strength is 3, and they're only dealing 1 point of damage or 4 on a crit. So I think for 85 points, that's about average, you're not going to see much more than that. We know they're going to get those 2 abilities, but no other one, so I think this is pretty standard for an 85 point model. If you bought this separately, you could also build it as a Witch Elf Hag and the Witch Elves. So you've got some more options there potentially, but again, whether this kit will include it, I'm not sure. But I imagine it's got to be part of the same sprue, so you could potentially have the option for a lot more fighters here. Our leader, the Handmaiden, is going to get that triple sacrifice to Cain, and then all the fighters are going to get the double and triple as regular fighter abilities. That sums up all the models that are included in this Arena of Shades for the Daughters of Cain, and I've put them together and worked out the points, and you've got potentially 2,885 points here, which is more than you'll need for any Warcry campaign. You can have a nice variety of fighters, you can have a really interesting roster, and certainly enough for 1,400 points maximum when playing the campaign mode. Now let's move on to the Nighthaunt and we'll have a look at all the models there and we'll take everything from the Bringers of Death supplement book. Let's have a look at the abilities first and again we'll run through the ability that all the models are going to have and that's a double called Aura of Dread. Here we pick a visible enemy fighter within a number of inches of this fighter equal to the value of the ability. Until the end of the battle round, subtract 1 from the strength characteristic to a minimum of 1 of attack actions made by that fighter. A fighter can only be targeted once per battle round by this ability. So this ties in the value of the ability here, and that's the distance that you can actually get this Aura of Dread to work under. So that's quite interesting, quite fun, and then you can subtract 
one from the strength characteristic so that's really cool and draining that energy of the opponent but you can only do it once per battle round so you can't get lots of your different fighters doing it to one of the enemy fighters Let's start with the miniatures now, and the first one is this new Scriptor Mortis. A great looking character, really fits in with the vibe of the Night Haunt, but I think they've done something really cool here. I love the candles, the book, and the whole look of the model. For me, it screams out Guardian of Souls. Looking at the stats there, we've got 220 points, movement 5, toughness 5, can take 20 wounds. We've got the Flight Rue Mark, the Mystic Rue Mark, and the Leader Rue Mark. And then for the weapon, we've got this first like magical weapon, which is a range 3 to 7, 2 attack strength 3, dealing 3 to 6 on a crit. So that's about average for a mystic weapon. And then we've also got the dagger up close, range of 1, 2 attacks, strength 3, dealing 1 to 4 on a crit. And I think that's pretty weak, but it suits the model. I think really you are using the magical weapon here a lot, and you're going to be wanting to use the ability. So let's have a look at those abilities for this one. Because this one's got the mystic ability and the leader ability, Rune Mark, you can use the triple called Unholy Light. And here you remove up to one damage point allocated to each friendly fighter within six inches of this fighter. So you've got to keep them quite close to them. So this guy's going to have to get in the fight a little bit. And so you want to keep him behind those, I suppose, have a kind of wall in front of those other fighters. And then he can use that range weapon perhaps over the top. But um, being able to remove those damage points is really useful so i like this ability then we've got the triple spectral summon which any leader with these room marks can use and here you pick a friendly fighter that's been taken down set up that fighter once more on the battlefield wholly within three inches of this fighter the fighter set up on the battlefield no longer counts as being taken down and remove a number of damage points allocated to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So this is really good as well, really fits in with the model. And so I think this is really the sort of model you want to keep out of the fight, but use them to strengthen your other fighters, keep their damage points from not going down too low. And then you can even bring one back onto the battlefield if they've been taken down. So yeah, some really interesting abilities that really suit the model. Next, we've got this collection of three models, which are the Crawlock the Jailer set. And one of those is going to be the Spirit Torment. And this is 240 points, movement 5, toughness 5, 25 wounds, the Leader Rune Mark, the Trapper Rune Mark, and the Fly Rune Mark. And then with the weapon, it's a range of 2, 2 attacks, strength 5, dealing 3 to 5 on a crit. So you've got a lot going on here. Lots of Rune Marks. We can fly pretty tough and takes a good amount of wounds. But let's have a look at the ability for this leader option. We've already seen the triple spectral summon, so let's take a look at the quad captured soul energy. And a fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. So that's important to note. And then remove a number of damage points to all visible friendly fighters within six inches of this fighter equal to the value of the ability. So another great healing ability here. This could be super powerful. You're definitely going to get this one in the fight with that strength and toughness. So he's going to really have a good chance of taking down an enemy fighter during their activation. And then with a quad highs five or six value, you can really start bringing back some damage points to all those visible friendly fighters within six inches. So really nice ability and really interesting way to take your night horn, having these two models, two leader options or a leader and a hero that are both healing them. You're also going to get two Chain Gusts, or you could play them all as Chain Gusts if you wanted to. And they're going to be 170 points each. They've only got the Fly Rue Mark, so no other abilities. They've got a nice movement, 6. Toughness is great at 5, and they can take 15 wounds. Their range here is 8 inches, and they can make two attacks, strength 4, dealing 1 to 4 on a crit. So that's pretty good, having that nice 8-inch range. But they're only making two attacks, and certainly not as much damage. But it's that toughness, that flight, that nice movement that I think makes them the 170-point value. And then for the ability, they're going to get the double Aura of Dread that we've already seen earlier on. Now we're on to the Blade Geist Revenants. And you're going to get a box of 10 of these. They're going to come in at 135 points each. They've got the Fly Rue Mark, but no other Rue Marks. So no abilities, extra abilities. And then they've got Movement 6. Again, Toughness 5 can take 10 wounds. Their range is a 1-inch range. 
three attacks, strength four, dealing one to four on a crit. So we've got a really nice distance there, six inches of movement, really tough. Ten wounds isn't a lot, um, but for 135 points, I think it evens out. You're not going to do a huge amount of damage with them, but that flight and that toughness is really impressive. And don't forget, they get that double Aura of Dread fighter ability. Next, we're on to the Maya Morn Banshees. You get a set of four of these. This is the easy build set. They're going to be 145 points each, so a lot of points for a small set like this. They've got movement six, that toughness five again, and ten wounds. They can fly, and with their weapon, it's a range one. They can make three attacks with their dagger, and that's strength four, dealing two to four on a crit. So these are pretty handy. There's a nice amount of attack and damage there, and the strength's not bad, but that movement six that can fly and the five toughness is going to make these pretty difficult to take down. So I think for 145 points, and for some great looking models, I really like this set. They'll also get that Aura of Dread ability. Now we're on to some new models, the Craven Throne Guards. And I had a look through the book and I couldn't really find any fighter cards except the Tomb Banshee that had any range or anything that really fitted in with them. And I think you've got to be looking at about 120 points for these potentially with at least a three to nine inch range. But I'll be making some cards up for these as well for my Patreons this month. So they'll be available tomorrow up on the Patreon if you're interested. But that makes these Craven Throne Guard the only ones that didn't really have any cards included in the Bringers of Death book. So there's nothing really that stood out that you could use. Potentially the Tomb Banshee, but the points are way too high. And I think these have got to be a little bit less around that 120 point mark. We know from the articles of the Warhammer community site that these can shoot their bolts through walls and things. So that's going to make it really interesting and certainly something really fun to build an ability around for Warcry. So taking that 120 point value for those Craven Throne Guards, I've put together all the models that are included for the Nighthorn, and we're looking at 2,990 points. So again, loads of points, more than enough for your roster, more than enough for that maximum 1,400 points for campaign play. A nice variety, some really interesting models, although I don't think with the Nighthorn you get access to as many abilities as I would like. They do have a lot of fighter abilities and you're not really accessing hardly any of them with these fighter options. So that's one thing to think about if you are considering picking this up for your war cry. But altogether, I think they've done a really good job here. For Age of Sigma, it looks good. And I think for Warcry, you've also got enough variety to make it pretty interesting. If you're into Nighthorn, there's a good chance you'll have some of these already, potentially, um, but maybe not. And if you don't, then that's going to make it really good because then you'll get some nice additional models put in. For the Daughters of Cain, I actually prefer this Arena of Shades collection than the ones put together for actual Warcry. So if you bought the Daughters of Cain Warcry set for 5250, I don't think you get quite as much of a good range of fighters as you would from this Arena of Shades box. So if you can split the box with a friend, take those Daughters of Cain models, I think you've got a nice um, bunch here for Warcry. Of course, you're not going to get the Warcry cards or abilities or anything like that, but still, I think it's a good way to get some nice models. With that in mind, let's break down all the prices. So I've put together all the models and the kits if you were to buy them separately from Games Workshop. And that's going to come to £108. Now with a 20% discount that you should get at your local game store or online retailers, you're looking at £86.40 for the top end price for these models if bought separately. For the Nighthorn, you get five different sets. Now I don't know how much the new Craven Throne Guard are going to be, but I'm saying let's just call it £16. It could be more, I'm sure it will be, but let's just keep it at a nice modest figure. And that's going to bring this collection to 107 or 85.60 with that 20% discount. All up, that's £215 or £172 worth of models in the collection. The previous Fury of the Deep was £115 and then discounted to £91.45. But I suspect this is going to go up. The Arena of Shades is probably going to be about £125. So if we take that into account with the discount, you're probably going to get this for £100. Comparing that then to the price individually, and you're making a saving of £72.90. But of course, you also get the books tokens and war scrolls. And the books include the core rules as a small paperback. Now, a lot of people don't like the idea of comparing the full retail price for the individual sets against these. But I think a lot of people still do buy those individual sets. 
and I think it just really shows that if you can get hold of these collections they're definitely the way to go to start a collection or add to your army if you're looking for value for money because you're definitely going to save like this and I think looking at the two different um, sets of models for the Night Horn and the Daughters of Cain included in this one, I think I could justify the price here. And it's certainly with getting those books and tokens and the core rulebook, especially for Age of Sigma. I think this is a nice way to get started in the hobby if you're looking to build an army or maybe two, or if you split it with a friend, even better. And that's my summary of the Arena of Shades, looking at how good this will be for Warcry. But I'd love to hear your opinion and I'd like to know what you think about the units included or the fighters included. Do you think they're good for Warcry? Have you got a favourite? And out of the two, would you pick the Nighthorn or the Daughters of Cain? Let me know down below. It'd be great to hear what you think. If you're looking at pre-ordering the Arena of Shades this weekend, then consider ordering with my local friendly game store because they do deliver as well. They can post it out to you. So I'll put all their contact details below. You can get in touch really easily by phone or on Facebook and then they can help you out. They're a really great team. And um, yeah, I'd love for you to support them and show them some love. So I'll put the, all the details down below and you'll be able to pick it up from them if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.